I am here at Next House Copenhagen, which is a hostel here, like right downtown Copenhagen. The view is actually great outside. The beds are really comfy. They're very narrow though. Less than a single, I would say. But they are pretty nice. They got not full capsules, but definitely divided. These are very small. And when I'm trying to get out of the bed, it can be a little tricky, especially if you have to carry anything down. Like I have to get down and then grab what I need. I don't trust myself to carry anything down these tiny little steps. Another issue is that these lockers are very small. Also this one like sticks. So if you had a large travel backpack, like I think I could fit my 30 liter in here, but there's no way Chris could fit a 60 liter bag in here. Like you just have to have it on your bed and then just lock up your valuables, which is fine, I guess. So we got two beds in this room. They cost $98 each for two nights. Best feature of the room that we got is the bathroom. It's very nice, very clean. I think a really good use of space. It's compact little sink, toilet, shower. It also has the um, hair and body wash uh, because I didn't bring any, we just flew carry on so I didn't bring anything. So that's good. Place to hang your towels. So yeah, I think it's a good use of space here. These floors are heated floors. If that doesn't sell this room, I don't know what will. Kind of hard to film in here. There are two usable outlets here, as well as a USB outlet on this light. There's lots of places to charge your electronics if you need to, like we're charging huh, camera batteries right now. I don't know if you can read this, but the kitchen is not included. It's 20 kroner to use the kitchen. So the kitchen is actually really nice. The rooftop patio is great. I got someone to open the door for me to make sure I wanted to pay the 20 kron since we were only staying a few days. There's lots of seating. There's lots of utensils and workspaces. There are fridges and a pantry section in the back as well to store your food. I think the cost is definitely worth it if you prefer to cook your own food rather than eat out every day. The only problem is once you hand your key card in, you can't get back into this area unless someone opens the door for you. You get a free glass of beer that you can redeem from your check-in card for the two main bars, but not the rooftop bar. The locker room is great and you could just use it to store your bags and visit Copenhagen for the day. You don't have to actually have a reservation here to use it, but it does cost five euros for a few hours. It's a very small room, but you can kind of see there's uh, dryers, washers. Uh, so the only thing is this looks like it's coin which is very strange. I expect it to be like credit card tap uh, because everything else so far in Copenhagen has been credit card only, no cash. All right, so it looks like it costs 20 kroner to wash, 20 kroner to dry, so it'd be about 40 kroner to do a load of laundry here. The basement bar and chill area actually seemed really nice, but there was almost nobody there while we were there. So we didn't really get that hostel vibe. Also the handball soccer court thing was closed. The check-in was a bit of a disaster. There were so many people waiting to check in right at three o'clock that it did take a long time to get everyone through. I don't think that this is my favorite hostel that I've ever stayed at. If you prefer the higher end hostels with a lot of facilities and amenities, it is really good for the cost, but I did not get the hostel vibe atmosphere that you usually get with the smaller hostels. It seemed more like a hotel with dorm rooms. Okay, so I'm gonna check what the reviews are on Hostel World for this hostel and see if I agree. We are, where am I? Copenhagen. 
So they're the third one that comes up when I search and they have a 9.4. So they brand themselves as a luxurious hostel. High quality and urban elegance. One of the nicest hostels I visited. Really nice hostel, sleek design, room was super clean. This person said clean and well run, but too large for the hostel atmosphere. And I actually agree with that. And he said, feels like a hotel with dorms, which is exactly what I said. A lot of hostels I've been at, like you talk to everybody that's there, but this one is so big and there's so many people. <laughs> this person said the kitchen should be cheap or free. I kind of agree. Like why not just add two euros to everyone's fee and then include the kitchen for free. But there's not that much fridge space. So I guess by only letting the people use it that want to use it and keeping the base price lower, it kind of makes sense, especially because 20, Crone, if you're staying here for a week, is a really good deal. If you're staying here for a day, it's a bit pricey. Oh, someone did not like their experience with the staff members here. No attempt to be reasonable, so they said that they kept throwing out their cheese in the fridge. It's not very clear, but there's a little tag and you write your name and your checkout date and you put it on your food so that they know, first of all, how long it's been there and if you're still here. I do kind of agree that the people at the front desk were not the friendliest. I mean, they're dealing with so many people. Uh, honestly, this is probably one of the busiest hostels I have ever been at. And I can see why they would not want to make small talk with every person, so I do understand. But they're definitely not the friendliest hostel workers I've ever met. Oh yeah, the bus stops right out front. That's actually so handy. And we're like a 10 minute walk to the main, not even a 10 minute walk, to the main central station. So it's a great location if you don't want to walk too far with your bags. You can t literally take the 5C, it stops right, there's a bus stop right in front of the doors. And I do actually agree with this. This person said, I wish the bottom bunks had more privacy like the top ones. So the top bunks uh, have a horizontal um, sort of wall, but the bottom ones are open. So the two bottom bunks are kind of facing each other. I'm surprised there aren't curtains there. And there actually looks like there's a little track, like there should have been curtains. I do agree that the bottom bunks maybe should have had a little more privacy. Another thing too is the light was coming right in, even I, even though I tried to close the curtains and woke me up. Oh, you did have curtains. Oh, you mean the window curtains? The window curtains. Yeah, that's another thing. The window curtains don't quite fit the window properly, so there were like gaps of light. It stays really light, really late, and then the sun came up really early at like four in the morning, so the light was waking us up. So yeah, if you had another curtain on your bed, like because there's the window curtains and then another curtain on your bed, I think that would help with that. Conveniently located near the Netto supermarket. That's another thing. There is a supermarket like four minute walk away so you can get whatever you need. This person said I have mixed feelings. It's very clean, modern, and the common areas were very nice. However, there's flaws. The rooms are tiny, some of the smallest I've ever stayed in. Your, if your luggage isn't carry-on size, there's nowhere to put it. That's actually true. There's not a lot of floor space and the lockers don't really fit travel bags. They're made for like, like purses and backpacks. So if you had four people with four big travel bags, I don't know where you would put them all in the room. There are supposedly events. I don't think any of them were happening this weekend just because there's so much going on in the city. So it'd be interesting to be here with one of their events, whether it's like a, a pub crawl or something in the bar happening. I would love to see that and see if it's better. Oh yeah, and check-in is a nightmare. It was so busy and like everyone you can just chill downstairs. You don't have to be checked in to actually chill in the, the lower bar area and lounge area. But then when check-in opens at three, like everyone just like swarms the lobby. And it took us a, quite a while because you have to check in each person. It doesn't like, even though I put both our names on the email, I had to check us both in separately with separate numbers. So it was like 37400 and 37399. So I had to do two different things, with putting our passport numbers in. Even though I put them in, in Hostel World, I had to do it again. The lineup was really long for the self-check-in. It took quite a while to get through. There are quite a few stations. I think there were like six stations. Um, there was some staff around, but they, I mean, they were like helping if people were having difficulties. But I don't know that the self-check-in is necessarily better than a traditional check-in. I don't know, what do you think? Traditional check-in or self-check-in? I like the self-check-in idea. I just wish check-in was earlier. Yeah, or like a staggered check-in time, like start check-ins at two and then some people at three and then some people at four. Like everyone checking in at three o'clock was a lot of people in one area at a time. I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. I don't think it's a perfect hostel, but I do think it's a really nice hostel for the area. Lots of amenities, 
Uh, great walking distance, great location. The beds are really comfortable. But yeah, probably just too small for backpackers. If you've got your backpack on you, not enough privacy on the bottom bunks. Um, just really busy, a lot of people here. But yeah, I don't think this is a great hostel if you're here to meet people. I think this is a great hostel if you're traveling with a group of friends already.